Procreate is one of the best and simplest creative apps on the iPad. But when you first open it up, it can feel quite daunting trying to understand what all the tools do. Hopefully this basic beginner's guide will get you up to speed creating your first piece of artwork in no time. First, we'll look at the gallery and create our first canvas, and then we'll do an overview of the basic tools within the Procreate interface. I recommend, if you can, uh, having an iPad with you uh, as you watch this video so you can try out and get used to all the different tools. When you first open up Procreate, you're presented with the gallery page. You won't have these four rows, uh, you'll just have four example artworks to look through. At the top right hand corner, you have three words and a plus icon. If you click on select, uh, it bring up another um, set of menus and you can, the first one, if you select two or more artworks and press stack, that will put it into a folder just for sorting. Um, if you click on preview, it will give you a preview of one of the artworks. Uh, you can pinch to close that. If you press share, that means you can save it in a variety of formats uh, and you can either then uh, save it to the iPad or share it via AirDrop or email it to someone. Uh, if you press duplicate, it'll make a duplication of uh, the original artwork and delete will de permanently delete it from Procreate. If you press the X, that'll close that menu. But also if you swipe to the left on any of the artworks, it will give you a similar uh, choice of options, share, duplicate and delete. If you tap on the title, you can rename it or give it a name. And also if you created an artwork and it was in landscape, but you would rather have it in portrait, you can use two fingers and just turn it around and it becomes portrait. Clicking on the import, uh, button uh, you can import either a procreate photoshop or image that's stored on your ipad if you press the photo that will open up your gallery of photos uh, your library and you can choose any of those photos and it will open it open up that image uh, as a new canvas with uh, the photo on the first layer now if you press the plus icon we can now create a canvas the top one is the screen size, but this will differ depending on the size of iPad you've got. And then you're left with loads of other templates that you can choose from, but you can also create your own template or create your own canvas. And you do that by pressing the little plus icon at the top right of that panel. And here we can set the dimensions either in pixels, inches, centimeters, or millimeters. One thing to note is that the larger the size of canvas you has, the less layers that you have available to you. So for instance, here we've got a 1000 by 1000 uh, pixel document, and that gives us a maximum layers of 250, which is plenty. But if we change it to 3000 by 3000, we then only get 55 layers, which is still fine, but just this also differs depending on what spec of iPad you have, because the quicker ones like the Oppo Pro will give you more layers, whereas maybe the entry level iPad will get a lot less layers. Uh, other options in here is just color profile. Roughly what this means is, is depending on what you're going to do with the finished uh, file, uh, RGB is mainly for screen use, whereas CMYK is if you're gonna get it printed out. Um, You've got time-lapse options. Uh, so something that Procreate does is that you can get it to record your process and then you can release it as a, a video showing the whole process of your creation. And here you can set the quality of that video, um, uh, whether you want it like 4K or you want really good quality or you just want it low quality and a rough one. And then you have uh, canvas properties where you can set which background color you want it to come up with every time and whether you want that background on or off. So once you're happy, you can just then, oh, also you click on the title and then you can give it a name, give it a name and then press create and that will auto automatically open up that canvas. Go back to gallery. And then when we want to create an, a new one of that exact size, it will be put down here at the bottom here uh, with the name of what we called it and the dimensions. But if you want to change it for any reason, you got the dimensions wrong, you can swipe to the left and press edit and that bring up that panel again and you can change the size 
and click save. Uh, but say, you know, we've got a couple here and I don't want the first one, I can just swipe that and then delete that. But for now, we are just gonna stick with the screen size. So click on that and that will open our new canvas. And then we can have a look at the uh, basic interface of Procreate. We're going to start at the top right hand corner and the first icon, which is the brush icon, is the one we need to be highlighted to be able to draw, start drawing. If you click on it again, it'll bring up the extensive brush library in Procreate, which has hundreds and hundreds of brushes from sketching, inking, calligraphy, drawing, painting, lots and lots and lots to experiment with. But two that I gravitate the most for what I do with my lettering is in the sketching one and the 6B pencil. That gives me some nice uh, textured lines, but if I hold it, hold the pencil more horizontally, I get a nice shading effect as well. And then the other one I use the most is probably the ink in the inking category and studio pen, and that gives me nice smooth lines and also good thicks and thins for uh, script calligraphy. Let me just clear that. The next one along is the smudge tool. So say I had a couple of colors. I want to smudge those colors together and I'd use a smudge tool. And again, if I click it again, after I've highlighted, it will bring up the same brush library that's in the, uh, under the brush icon. And I can either se select the same one I've been using or I can select another one here. Or I can select a airbrushing one because then it'll be nice and soft. And then I can smudge it like I was using my finger or I was using a wet paintbrush or something. So that's a smudge tool. So the next one along is the eraser tool. And again, if you select that again, it'll bring up the same brush library. So you can either erase the same uh, pen you've been using or a different one again and that just erases from your image that's on there. And you can select one which has a bit more texture to get different effects. Next up, we have the layers panel. This enables you to stack individual image elements on different layers. So you have more flexibility to delete or alter those individual elements without affecting the layers below. So to create a new layer, you press plus on the uh, panel. And then when you have uh, an object on one layer, we've created another layer and then have another object. We can then move those around by holding down uh, the pencil on the layer and then we can move it below that object. We can turn that layer on and off by clicking the little tick box next to it. We can delete that layer by swiping it to the left. We can select delete or we can make a duplication of that layer or we can lock that layer if we don't want it to accidentally be moved or deleted. Uh, also we have this N icon here. If you click on that, it'll bring up opacity and blending options. Blending options just um, change how it interacts with the image below that, on the layer below. And you can cycle through those and see how it changes it. And then we also have this slider, which is the opacity slider. On max, it's a solid, but then it also gets more transparent the lower the opacity. Then we have a list of options if you click on the thumbnail. I'm not gonna go into many of these because that's a whole video in itself, but one, two I use the most are uh, clear, just clears that whole layer. And then I might wanna fill that whole layer. I click on that thumbnail again, have this right color selected and press fill layer. Also, you can um, click on that layer and click uh, rename if you want to give it a title. And the background color be can be changed by just tapping on the thumbnail of that. And then you can select any of the colors from your palette.
Next, we can then choose colors with this little dot on the top right corner. Click on it. It'll probably bring you to this one first, which is the color disc, where you can select colors using these two, the inner, inner disc and outer disc. Or we have the classic sort of square with the hue, saturation and brightness sliders. And then we have the harmony colors, which uh, automatically chooses um, three colors that work together with each other and you have options for changing how those colors are generated. And then we have the value sliders, again, hue, saturation, brightness, and the RGB sliders. And then last uh, option is the palettes. So you can create your own palette by pressing the plus icon, create new palette. And then what you can do is you can select any of these colors and then to add a color to your palette, you just tap and it will add it. And then you can select another color. Go back to your palette, add another one. If you want to delete something from a palette, hold down your finger, hold down your brush onto the color and it say delete swatch and delete the swatch. Swatch. If you want to make it appear down the bottom here, you just need to make sure it's set to default, is highlighted. One last thing with colors is if you want to fill an object, so say we've drawn an object and you want to fill it with a color, you can just drag and drop that color onto the object. If your object has got a slight gap in it and you try and fill it, it will bleed out and fill the whole of the canvas or whole of that layer. So make sure if that happens, you just block the gaps and then you can fill it. Over on the left hand side, we have uh, two sliders. We have the top one, which is the brush size slider. So that's our biggest size for that brush. I can take it down to a much smaller, thinner size. And then the brush slider, the slider below that is the opacity slider. Again, with the like this opacity slider in the layers panel, that's 100%. And then it goes all the way down to 0% again. And then we have this icon here. If we tap that, it brings up this little uh, magnifying glass. And what that does is enable us to select a color from our canvas. It might be one that's not in our palettes, but we wanted to select it. That's a way of doing it. So the eyedropper tool, and it will automatically put that color up there. So if I press it again and drag it over to the black, it will select that black. And then we have two arrows at the very bottom. So if I draw something, I might want to undo that and I can select that arrow and it will undo it. If I want to bring it back, for instance, I didn't want to undo it, I can then select the forward arrow and it'll bring it back. So one of the gestures you can use using your fingers, which will be really helpful for this, is two fingers tap and it will do undo. And you can keep undoing for the whole of the whole of your drawing and the other one is three fingers if you want to redo. So going to the top left of um, the toolbar we've got gallery which takes us back to the gallery. We have the spanner tool. This is like our settings area. So the first one which is add we can insert a file, we can insert a photo, uh, take a photo or we can add some text. We click add text, it brings up this text box. We can type in uh, the words we want. We can select it and then we can change what font it is, what size it is, some other options as well. Then, and then that's in there as some text. And if we want to edit it again, we can just click on the thumbnail and go to edit text. Then we have cut, copy and paste in there as well if we want to copy elements of our 
design. We have canvas. We can crop and resize our canvas if we want to. Uh, and some other uh, items I'll go into in another video. We have share. This is a bit like what we had in the gallery view where we can save it as a certain file format. Uh, then we have video that shows us our time lapse recording and you can turn whether it records it or not off and on here or we can export that time lapse recording as well. Then we have uh, preferences, lots of different things you can change in here. Uh, but you can, the top one is whether you want it light or dark, having the interface light or dark, and whether you have this bar where the sliders are on, on the right or left side, depending on which hand you hold the pencil with. And then you have help, which has links to the Procreate handbook that's really good, uh, stuff to learn with Procreate and some other advanced settings. Next, we have this magic wand icon which opens up the adjustments panel. And here we can change colors, we can blur something, we can add some noise and other effects to it. Uh, that's one uh, for a later video, but it's just a uh, good fun with different effects you can apply to your artwork there. Then next we have this S icon, which is the selection tool, brings up this panel at the bottom. And here we can select part of our artwork if we want to copy it or just delete an area. And we can do this in a variety of ways. This freehand enables this dotted line to select or automatic select. You can tap on an item and it will select that item. And then we have a rectangle shape or a lip shape to select items. And with that, we can then copy and paste items using that menu in our actions panel. Lastly, we have the transform tool, which is this arrow icon. This enables us to manipulate the size, shape, or position of an object in a layer. It puts a bounded box around uh, whatever the object is, which is this dotted line with all these nodes around it. And if we drag anywhere inside or outside, we can move it around our canvas. We can rotate it with that little green uh, point and we can also grab any of these blue nodes and transform it make it bigger or smaller as default it will go to uniform on this uh, bar at the bottom uniform just keeps the original aspect ratio of the object free form lets us uh, squash or stretch the object in any direction Distort uh, lets us change the perspective by just moving one point at a time. And Warp uh, adds a mesh so we can just uh, move it into any direction, especially if we're trying to make something look like it's curved around an object. I hope you found that basic beginner's guide useful. There is quite a lot of information to take in there. So what I'll do is I'll add some timestamps in the description below so you can quickly flick to parts that you want to rewatch. As always, if there are any questions that have come up from this video, then please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to reply to them. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.